Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel for day 965 of our daily content grind and you might be wondering why you are staring at an armorizer right now. That is because the this whole experiment with these rock characters has been fascinating to me because Hasbro, the Transformers crew on camera, have just been name dropping rock lords to reference these and it's so weird to listen to them talk about because while they technically bought the company who made them, uh, well, at least branded them, it's still bizarre. It's still bizarre because this was one of their competitors. You know, at the beginning, this was their biggest competitor's only real spinoff line. And it's a bizarre thing for them to go through. And to then now try to do their own. And you know what? It got me to thinking. How many more times has this happened throughout Transformers history? How many times has Hasbro looked at another toy line and gone, we should do that, but Transformer. And you know what? It's been a lot. It's been a lot for various reasons over the years. Um, but, you know, it's just what you do. When you're a brand that's been around for as long as Transformers, you have to find ways of staying interesting, keeping up with the times, following trends, etc. You know, it's like when Ninja Turtles happened. How many anthropomorphic animal shows and uh, toy lines did we get? Because everyone wanted a piece. Kind of the same concept here. So, we're going to start in-house because, you know, the first place you're going to rip off is yourselves. And that would be the G.I. Joe line. Three and three-quarter inch figures relying on vehicles uh, for their larger figures. And, uh, yeah, just really nice articulated toys for the time. They managed to survive the 80s better than Transformers did. Just something about them just maintained relevancy and kept interest of kids a little bit longer. So when Transformers is sinking and no one wanted your pretenders, what do you do? You come up with the Action Masters. Similar design work, same scale, and still relying on vehicles for larger toys. However... Little elements of transformation to still keep the transformer aspect going, but largely just kind of reducing it down to an action figure line. Hey, G.I. Joe's still selling well, so clearly this might save the transformer brand. It did not. We know it did not. Um, this was the last nail in the Generation 1 coffin. No one really asked for this, and no one's really asked for it since. I have to admit, there are many many toy lines out there that try to do action figure transformers as, as it turns out when you keep transformers from transforming they don't sell particularly well it's just kind of the truth about it sometimes but that's in-house it's easy to rip off yourselves because it's the same design teams and, that, and all that what about other toy lines when has transformers ever copied something directly and tried to ape one of their trends well, around the exact same time, actually, the Micro Machines became a thing. So this was kind of like a revolutionary thing at the time. These tiny scale vehicle toys, which means that it's, you could have, like, instead of carrying just one or two cars in your pocket, you could have an entire fleet. You just have an entire, like, garage full of cars just in your pocket. And then to come up with all the different play sets for that that could transform into other vehicles or uh, just like, you know, car-based objects. I had the gas can. But it's a brilliant concept, and it kicked off this micro toy trend that continued, you know, ad nauseum. You know, when they moved into action figures with like Polly Pocket and Mighty Max, and even today, there's still micro toys around. Transformers absolutely wanted in on this. We know for a fact because Hasbro stated it themselves. Micro Machines was the inspiration for Micro Masters. It was them trying to capitalize on the micro toy trend. And you know what? Out of everything they tried late G1 to try and keep interest in uh, for kids, this is the thing that succeeded the longest. Not only did it get a lot of larger things sold, but also they continued for two years, which is a lot better than others did. Even in Japan, these seem to do a little bit better than a lot of late G1 stuff as they continue producing them even after America had given up on the concept. But, you know, we know these are a direct attempt to ape micro-machines. They just are. 
So no surprise there. Let's get a little bit weirder now, shall we? Who remembers Muscle? So Muscle is uh, a Japanese line of, well, uh, eraser figurines. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, uh, Kakeshi Gomu is the technical name, which literally means eraser gum. But it's a toy style that's been popular ever since the 70s in Japan. And even today, companies will produce these little eraser figurines of their characters. But in America, it, it caught on as muscle, these tiny little wrestler figures. So it shouldn't be a surprise that two years later, these things started showing up in packages. Now, to be fair, these had been released in Japan the same year muscle came out in America, 1985. So, not a big surprise that Decoy eventually made its way over, considering that Muscle had such popularity behind it, and they were just readily available. You could find them packed in on card, carded 1987 figures. So, you know, if you were a throttle bot, it could have been any random figure. If you were one of the combiner figures released that year, could have been, uh, could have been any Autobot or Decepticon of your particular faction makes it really annoying to get an entire collection of these i i'm just imagining because there's a lot more of these than there were 86 87 bots on card but point being it seemed like they brought them over as a direct response to muscle finding popularity in america and it doesn't make for a bad little micro inclusion you know it's the, about the only megatron available around that time oddly enough but it did seem yeah, it it does. They're definitely capitalizing. They're de they're absolutely capitalizing on the popularity. Here's an obvious one, and they've done this more than once. Let's talk about Hot Wheels just for a second, shall we? Why wouldn't you want to copy Hot Wheels when your main toy line is about vehicles that transform? So, um, this is a, it's a pretty obvious one, right? It's a pre it's pretty obvious. Like, let's just make if we make action figure transformers, let's just make car transformers it seems like the most obvious transition in the world so they've tried this multiple times the first time is probably one that some don't even realize and that is the g2 gobots so the all the whole idea behind these was that while they were very simple figures even if you know them as spy changers uh the how the whole gimmick to them is the fact that they had a full metal axle going all the way through the vehicle which ensures that the vehicle rolls very, very well, similar to how Hot Wheels work. The transformation is very simple because the toy is engineered around these axles and having to keep them intact. So thus you have what we now, what we generally call spy changers these days. It's a, it's a way of copying them because they specifically are designed to fit on Hot Wheels tracks. You are absolutely supposed to be using these on another company's uh, toy. So don't get them mistaken. It's a, it's a sneaky way of doing it, but it does work. Now, obviously, they're all plastic, so the die-cast cars from Hot Wheels roll quite a bit better because of the weight. So they're not the best on the track, and of course, they didn't last terribly long though they did get quite a few repaints and reruns but of course that's kind of cheating because that's not technically a hot wheel car no these are technically hot wheel cars so they thought because the movies are taking off so well and everything we put the movie logos on is selling let's try it again so we got transformers rpms around the time of revenge of the fallen with vehicles for the popular characters from both of the movies that existed at the time. These are far, far more like your traditional Hot Wheel. They don't transform at all. They have the, the robot sculpted underneath, weirdly enough, but they are just kind of meant to be plain old toy cars. Now, you might be calling me on this because, yes, a toy car hardly means they're copying Hot Wheels, right? Plenty of other toy car lines exist, they have before Hot Wheels, and, well, there won't be anything after Hot Wheels because Hot Wheels is never going to end. The point being, it's a more generic toy. And you are correct. Whether it's RPM or the follow-up line Speed Stars, which was basically the exact same thing, I, I mean, you can't directly say, yeah, that's obviously ripping off Hot Wheels. Until I get to this. 
This Devastator set came out as like the crowning piece of the whole RPMs line. And you know what? It's the most Hot Wheels thing I've ever seen Hasbro produce. Yeah, it's this kind of thing. It's this kind of thing. I mean, at least here, you know, they're not doing what GoBots did and going like, yeah, like, it's just a coincidence that these vehicles that have like full axle wheels and roll really well just happen to be the size that fits on your Hot Wheels tracks. Total coincidence. At least here, they're actually making their own tracks, right? But that really does take it into the Hot Wheels camp. Now, today, the interesting thing is that we are now on the reverse side of this. This is like this is where this debate starts getting a little bit interesting to me because now we have Transformer branded Hot Wheels cars. So we've already seen the Bumblebee, the Optimus Prime recently leaked. We know there's more after that. I just think it's amazing that for something they've tried multiple times to copy, they eventually just kind of gave up and said, let the pro do it. You know what? We're you know what? We're not above working with Mattel so that they could have something cool and we can at least say we have it, you know? So the so yeah, they kind of gave up on that one and now we just have Transformer Hot Wheels. It's an interesting time. Here's another one you're probably going to disagree with, but I really do think I'm on the mark on this one. We need to talk about Bakugan a little bit. So, this is another one of those like pseudo transforming toy lines that I really didn't think would take off and now it's it's still around and it's still really popular. So good on that, good on Spin Masters. You you brought over a good good uh good toy line. Uh, I'm I'm sure you've done you've done well. So the whole play pattern idea behind Bakugan is two transforming small toys that you roll forward uh, in the case of Bakugan, they catch on the the card in that they uh, they they come with in order to trigger the transformation. So that's a super neat trick. The thing with Bakugan, though, is you have to be very, very careful. Because if you come up with another toy that uses a magnetic card in order to trigger the transformation of your toy, even if it is not trying to be a versus game like Bakugan is, you're still potentially going to get in trouble. So, Me Card, as well as Screechers Wild, a toy line we covered in its original Chinese format uh, a long time ago on this channel. Those particular toy lines tried to make a push into America, both got sued by Spin Masters because they were so similar to how Bakugan worked. So when you come up with something that is two transforming things that are supposed to compete in a game against each other, you have to be exceptionally careful and you have to come up with your own system. So that is what bot shots are. So it is the exact same game concept. However, the gameplay is particularly different. So instead of just rolling them onto a magnetic card to trigger the transformation, you crash them into each other and the impact springs them up into robot mode. So it does have more of a battle element to it. You know, it's less Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, it's more transformer etic. But the, the result is basically the same. You have a chest window that you can flip to. Um, what, uh, th it's, it's basically a rock, paper, scissor game. I haven't looked one at one in a long time, so I'm not going to try to remember what all three the, the the styles are. But it's basically you switch it to rock, paper, or scissors and crash into each other. And if you both picked rock, then you go by whatever the number score is on your on your little not Bakugan. So yeah, there was yeah, so they are transforming little things that you play the game with. Just different enough from Bakugan to not invite a lawsuit but still had basically the exact same intent and function. Here's another one that we know for fact is a, is really uh, something that Hasbro absolutely copied because it was exploding in popularity. Shopkins. Cute little everyday objects turned into these tiny adorable little characters. So this exploded as a girl's brand and then you saw another, like like the same way Micro Machines kind of kicked off a micro toy uh, you know, line and in the interest. Shopkins kind of did the same thing because, you know, around the same time, you've got like mini brands coming up, you know, and lots of, lots of, lots of little mini toys in blind capsules sold at your target. 
But these things took off so well, Hasbro decided to make Transformers do something like this. That is where we got BotBots. Similar concept. Very cute, cartoony, everyday objects that, in this case, turned into little tiny robots. And credit where credit's due. There's an immense variety of these. There are some bot bots that are actually fairly intriguing in how simple they are, but they still really work well as just like tiny little transformers that are nice to keep on a desk. They're definitely more interesting than Shopkins because Shopkins literally are just like, here's a figurine. Uh, some of them are mystery, which is the exact same thing they did. They, there was always a mystery packed in. So you can definitely see where the inspiration came from or I, the absolute plagiarism came from. I kind of wish BotBots did a little bit better. I think they went too many repaints and too many odd choices. There's a transforming piece of poop thanks to this toy line. I'm not comfortable with that idea. I'm not comfortable in that reality, but here we are. And we're going to finish it off with one of the most infamous examples, uh, especially if you are familiar with the history of this channel. We're going there. We are absolutely going there. Who wouldn't want to rip off Lego? How many Lego ripoffs have you seen over the years? How many have you seen on your, you know, you know, just browsing through Amazon? <laughs> you can't search for something on Amazon. You can't search for Transformers on Amazon without finding Lego knockoffs that are imitating both Lego and Transformers at the same time. You know, uh, that just, you know, and that just uh, doesn't even include all the things like Mega blocks and nano blocks and everything else that tries to be Lego without specifically being Lego. And of course, Hasbro wanted in on this as well. And they also tried multiple times. But of course, it's this channel. So yeah, Built to Rule gets the nod. The problem with Built to Rule was they kind of insisted that they still have some kind of transformation element to them and they weren't strictly brick based. So you ended up having toys with massive chunks that you couldn't, that technically you could put other Lego bricks on, but you know, like you, it's not like there's a, like one piece is the entire front end of a car. What are you really going to do with that? I guess it did make engineering them simple because these were very simple pieces and the transformation element to them was terrible. You can see by demolish or the end result is not great. This is one of the better looking ones, by the way. Um, go look up Optimus or Megatron. Go look up Megatron sometime. There, it, it's a horror show. And of course, this isn't the only time they've done this. Creo is the more recent example, which started off kind of the same as how, you know, they work, how, how Lego sets work. Here's an Optimus. You break it down, you build it back into the truck. There's plenty of those types of Lego sets. There's play sets with little minifigures, and eventually the line was just the minifigures, and then the line just poofed, went away, no warning. And it's another line where we've gone full circle, because of course now we have the Lego Optimus Prime, and the Bumblebee on the way, and if they both do, and if the Bumblebee does as well as the Optimus did, I'm sure there's going to be more as well, but you know, once again... Sometimes you just let the pros do it. Just suck it up, take the L, and just let someone better handle it. And that is the list for today. It's just what you have to do when you're into when you're in a toy franchise for this long. You gotta come up with ways to stay interesting. And if another toy company is doing something you think would work, by all means, go for it. It is just weird that a brand that's all about transformation sometimes needs to transform itself into somebody else. So like I said, these are only some of the examples. Please leave a few more in the comment section below. I'm sure there's enough to do another video of this at some point. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.